some of this data, this is the this is the city of Chicago's. Uh, this is un, this is an interface to the city of Chicago's enterprise system that manages information on its vendors, its RFP, and its contracts. There's a view of this, this is actually on the open data portal, but there's more information that you can get through this website. Um, so there's like a whole bunch of different slices that you could begin to think about would be interesting to this data. If you're a good governance kind of person, then you can start to be like, oh, okay, well, let's start to look at the contracts and awards and see like, are the same names coming up over and over again? Look at that, compare that to campaign finance, begin to start connecting the dots. If you're someone who wants to maybe, uh, this is actually what I've been thinking about. If you're someone who's like, man, procurement is kind of hard right now, because the thing is, is that there's not just this is the uh, solicitation page. That's where you go. And, that's where you go and see if there's actually anything uh, that you want to bid on if you're a small business. And it's not great. Um, it's, it's not. It's it's not very friendly to use. I would say. Uh, you know, it's like you know you can do some filling in. Find this thing is that there's there's similarly difficult websites to use for the park district, <coughs> for the schools, for the uh, for the county. And for a whole bunch of other agencies and municipalities, the thing is, is that like maybe this is actually a business opportunity, right? You know, I mean, the thing is, is that like if you can make an interface for for businesses that says like, okay, here's the one site that you can go to that has all of the current RFPs that are available, like in in this area. I mean, like that's already value. Plus, then you think about, okay, well, how is this RFP similar to other other existing RFPs? RFPs that have happened historically, and what contract got that, and like what vendor got that. And then you can start to say, okay, how is this? You're interested, like this is the kind of thing you're interested. In. You could actually pretty simply say, like, well, here are similar RFPs that have happened in the past, and then winning contracts for them, which might be something that you'd be very interested to know if you wanted to write an RFP, right? That data is in vendor information, contracts, contracts. It has in here the PDF of the contract that got awarded, right? So the thing is, is that like, if any of you are in business and you write and you're writing bids and stuff, it's actually really, this is, this is you almost never get to see the, see someone else's business uh, proposal that got accepted. Mm -hmm. You can here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and the thing is, is that you can do that, I mean, so you can do that across a whole different set of agencies and data sets, and then you actually, I mean, I think that there's like a way that you could do this where you would say like, okay, now that's something that is actually uh, something that a certain kind of business would pay for access to, right? I mean, there's probably a version of that that's just going to be need to open for everyone for uh, in order, even if you were just being purely mercantile, you needed to make, you would need to, you need to add a, a, some additional value for everyone just so you would have people come to your site, but then you can think about services that you add on top of that, which is like, oh, okay, do you want to, do you want to be notified a little bit earlier about upcoming things than other people? You know, I mean, I think that we could think maybe more about how you would actually go ahead, go about doing that. But you know, I mean, that's the kind of thing that you, that's the kind of thing that you kind of need to be bringing to this. It's not so much, not like, okay, what's a, what's a business case, but like, this data is like, what, is, what are the kinds of interesting questions, problems, and, uh, and use cases that this data could actually pertain to? Because if not, you just have like a whole bunch of like kind of contextual, the value that you guys can bring to this, the value of, like the value of data, is the is the data plus a context that you guys can provide, right? The data is like pretty much absolutely worthless without that, right? And so like the thinking and the context within which you can embed a piece of data is what actually is going to be bringing it value. So this would be like you know I mean I think that like someone should do this maybe I'll do it but I do think that there's like I mean someone can make I think reasonable I think there's a reasonable business case for business opportunity here. What would be the kind of social benefit of that sort of thing? Well, the social benefit would be for, I mean, uh, I think for, I think you would have to provide a certain level of social benefit, uh, even if you didn't want to, because you would need to have, you would need to, in, in order to have SEO, in order for people to come to this site, you would have to be, a, you would, it would need to be, it would need to be, you need to have a part of it be free, and that part that was free to be better, right. a better yeah. interface than the current system. But by doing that, you make the whole process more transparent and maybe a little easier to penetrate. As yeah, as you would. I mean, like ideally, what you would hope, both from a business point of view and maybe from a social benefit point of view, is, is that you would uh, increase the number 
uh, you would you you would you would improve the market uh, supply of vendors, right? Mm -hmm. So it's cheaper, better, and so on. Just get more vendors. Right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And then the idea is, if you build a product like this, do you advertise it on the city of Chicago official site, or does 1871 provide any kind of support for it? Well, so, I mean, this is a fascinating, this gets to a kind of a, a really deep debate that I think is very current in the open government community right now, which is like who, there is a business opportunity that exists because this site is not as good as it could be, right? You know, I mean, all the things that I just described are things that you could imagine being supplied by a government website, right? And so the question is, what's the right way to address this created, this created uh, business opportunity? Is it is the right thing to do is to go upstream and have it fixed upstream? Or is it, or is it to build basically a whole bunch of, uh, of kind of widgets that like, that, that buffer uh, the design choices uh, and limitations of the upstream data provider. Uh, I think it's a case-by-case -case basis. I mean, I do think it's a little bit scary. It'd be a little bit if you do the kind of buffering thing, then you then you've already you're entering a market where you already have a competitor, which is <laughs> which is that website. And like, if they actually made it a lot better, then you you wouldn't have anywhere to go, right? You can't like. If they actually get better, you can't differentiate. Like they, like they have a huge advantage. I think it is often a probably pretty safe bet to make that as good as this, these sites get, and they can get better. And we've seen this in Chicago. I mean, we've seen we've seen the public-facing technology of of many agencies improve dramatically. Uh, I still think it's likely that a business that depends upon pleasing its, ind its individual users is going to do a better job pleasing individual users than an agency for whom that is not their primary mandate. What uh, if the city actually provided incentives for that? So next time they buy this website, instead of just buying this little form, what if they bought a way of for any website to push to push you know data into it? And then maybe the business model is, when you bring us more bids, we give you a cut. I mean, this case is not a very good example, but there are other things that when you apply for a business permit, you could imagine any number of business permitting apps where uh, the city splits the fee with the vendor, and that way they don't have to contract with anyone. They just say, we're open for, for, biz for bids, and you guys can compete over the best user experience for creating a business in Chicago. Yeah, so I think, uh, I think that there are incentives. I mean, like what we—I mean, what we're kind of talking about is like the incentive structure that are faced by different kinds of actors, uh, and I think that we can imagine, we can imagine. I mean, this is kind of what this is the nuts and bolts of public policy, right? Uh, I think, uh, I and I think actually that's something that's very much along the lines of at least what John Tolba has articulated as his like as his vision for uh, data in the city when he was the CTO. That's kind of I think what he means when he says that. Um, that the city should be a platform, right? And that the thing is, is that uh, is is that the that the data should be kind of that ideally there would be a whole set of businesses that were built upon using the data. It was relatively easy to get the data out, and then they could and there would be ways of kind of building delightful interfaces for the public. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think different cities are doing different things. I think even within the, City, different kinds of, different kinds of, uh, different kinds, different agencies. Even within agencies, people are taking different strategies. I don't. I think this is kind of an open question of the moment. Do you know any groups that have built widgets specifically for the city of Chicago, in the city, and done it successfully? One of the one of the challenges with a product like this is, um, as business owners, we want to we want to charge for it. But having a free version of it online, there's a it's, well, it's tough. So you have to. I mean, so you, the question is, is like, can you produce enough additional value on top of this that you can capture some of that, right? Sure. And I think the answer to that is probably yes, right? I mean, I think the thing is, is that like, I mean, there are going to be a class of consumers for whom, like, like, who, who, if it's free, then they're not going to ever pay. But there's going to be, but there's, but that's just one class of the consumer. There's going to be other ones that are be like, okay, I'm going to be able to get, uh, I'm going to 
I'm going to have, I'm going to be able to pay you some of those, I'm going to pay you, I'm, you're going to save me time in, in, in monitoring and this website. I'm going to have, like, and you're going to help me figure out how to, how to make a better proposal that has a more likely chance of getting accepted. I think that there are some people who might be willing to pay for that. Sure. I don't know. Yeah, I can speak to that a little bit. We know some companies are using the data portal, for instance, for active businesses. They're not too vocal about it. They're, it's part of a much larger business enterprise. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, business license data uh, is, is frequently consumed by a company out of about Texas. They take that information and then they mash it up with other information that they have to create a value add, of which they sell some sort of service on. Uh, but we know that they, they're continually uh, sucking in that information. They're using First ones that hit to us if there's ever picked up with that particular set of data. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so they are, you know, but they're not too vocal about it. They're like, okay, we're, we're very open to phase where we're using that government data. They're, they're combining it with, I'm sure, numerous, numerous other data sources. Yeah, I guess, like, for instance, with CyberDrive Illinois, they tell you, like, you can be scraping this stuff. Like, if you're looking up corporate revenues and stuff, you're not supposed to be doing that. And I guess, for instance, like us, we're working on technology. Social outcomes, you don't care about profit. So sure. I'm looking at this website. I think the taxpayer paid for this website, right? right. Yeah. So like, who cares about profit? Why do I care about it? Why do I care about profit to, to well, scrape public stuff that the taxpayer paid for to make profit? I mean, philosophically, like, why do we care about that? Uh, well, because there's people who have different philosophies, right? I mean, I think that there are people who have a philosophy that they would like to make money, and that you know, <laughs> uh, and I'm just like, you know, I, I've done. So like, but let, sure, let's let's uh, let's go down that road. So.